Can you do ECN2 processing with the Filmomat? This is probably one of the most frequently asked questions that I'm getting. So today I will finally show you how to do it. ECN2 is a quite complex process which not only involves developer, stop path, bleach, fix and a stabilization step, but also the infamous ramjet removal step at the beginning. To make things worse, the developer even needs a different temperature compared to the rest of the process. You have to keep in mind that the ECN2 process is designed for large industrial applications with big continuous film processors. It was never intended to be used in small processors like the Filmomat. So in order to adapt the process to a machine like the Filmomat, we will need to make a few modifications. First of all, the temperature. The Filmomat can only maintain one temperature for all steps. So we can't do the developer at 41 degrees and the rest at 38. But instead, we can do the developer at 38 as well and simply increase the development time. The second issue, the amount of steps. The Filmomat has three chemical tanks, but the ECN2 process requires five different baths. Because of this, we will split the ECN2 process into two parts. In the first part, we will do the pre-bath, developer and stop. And in the second part, we will then do bleach and fix. In between, we will just exchange the fluids and the Filmomat tanks. Finally, there still is the ramjet issue. In industrial processors, the ramjet is removed by a set of rotating brushes, which is of course not applicable with a machine like the Filmomat. Here, we will just do the pre-bath, which softens the ramjet, and then a set of rinsing steps, which will wash off most of the ramjet. The small amount of ramjet that remains on the film will be manually removed afterwards. But more to that later on. Alright, now let's get started. At first we pour the developer into tank B and the stop bath into tank C. Then we wait until the chemicals reach 38 degrees. Right before we start the process, we fill the pre-bath into tank A. This way the pre-bath will remain more or less at room temperature. Once the pre-bath is poured in, we can then start the process. During the first rinse, you can already see the ramjet coming off. While the machine starts the development step, we now drain the pre-bath from tank A. Then we give the tank a small rinse with fresh water. After that, we can add the next bath, which is the bleach in this case. We proceed similarly with tank C once the stop bath is over and exchange it with the fixer. At this point, the first part of the process is finished and we manually start the second part. The second half again starts with tank A, which now contains the bleach. Once the process is finished, we can take the film out of the tank. We will now remove the ramjet from the film. Remember that most of the ramjet was already removed during the first rinse after the pre-bath, but a small amount still sticks to the film. In order to remove it, we first put all of the film in a big bowl of water. Then the film is pulled through a wet cotton pad. You can also use a sponge for this purpose. Notice how the cotton immediately turns black from the ramjet. I recommend to change the spot on the cotton pad about every 50 cm. Also make sure to wash out the pad and running water from time to time. Once we pull the whole film through the pad, we exchange the bowls and start the process again, this time with a fresh cotton pad. You immediately notice how much cleaner the pad remains now. Once you get used to the process, you will get quite fast with this procedure. It's very important to keep the film wet throughout the process. Otherwise, the remaining ramjet traces will dry 
and can't be removed anymore. In total, you should do around 4 or 5 cleaning cycles to really get rid of all the ramjet. Take this task seriously because you will see even the tiniest residues of ramjet in the final image. During the last round, the film is poured into a bowl with the stabilization bath. Afterwards, the film is hang up for drying. The drying clips used here are specially designed for Super 8 film and make it easy to fit all of the long film inside the small drying cabinet. Counter whites at the bottom keep the film under slight tension. Make sure that the film is not touching, otherwise it will create drying marks. And here you can see the final result after scanning. If you want to watch the full film, you can find it on this channel.